This video is an addition to my tutorial about Debian installation. Mm -hmm. During the setup I chose guided disk partitioning, use entire disk. The installation script prepared the selected disk for splitting into partitions. This overview can show connected storage devices, their partitions and currently suggested partition scheme for the selected disk. In the previous video I explained what those letters mean. But the changes on the disk are not applied yet. You can edit this partitioning scheme manually however you want. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's figure out what partitions we need. First, you need to find out the boot mode that you're installing Debian in. You can see which mode you use in the first installation menu. The mode is shown in the title. It can be UEFI or Legacy BIOS mode. If you're using the UEFI mode, you absolutely need the EFI partition or ESP. With the BIOS mode, you don't need the EFI partition, but you will have to answer yes in the window that will ask you if you want to install Grub or not. Grub is a bootloader package from the GNU project. This window usually appears at the very end of the installation process. Process. Choose the hard drive from the list for which you will install Grub. Ok, back to our partitioning scheme. As I'm using the UEFI mode, I'm going to keep the automatically created ESP here. Note the partition size. It should not be less than this exact number, 536.9 MB. When converted to the binary format, it's exactly 512 MB. If you use a smaller ESP, your computer may not boot up. I would like to repartition the rest of the hard drive. Let's delete those two partitions to free up the space on the disk. Select them one by one, press continue, then choose delete. Now we have a large area of free space on this hard drive. Let's use the free space to create some partitions. We should start with the mandatory one. It's the root system partition. Select the free space at the end of the disk and press continue. Choose create a new partition. In the next window the installation script asks us for the partition size. I'm going to create additional partitions, so I want to make this partition as small as possible to fit others as well, but also I don't want to make it too small, because if the system partition runs out of free space, then the computer usually freezes or gives an error. The optimal size for the root partition is a pretty complicated subject and depends on many things. For example, what desktop environment you are going to install, what applications you are going to use. Debian installation guide recommends to allocate 10 GB minimum. It's always a good idea to go a bit more than that. 30 GB is a good choice, but if you are a hardcore gamer and going to install dozens of 3D games, then even 100 GB probably won't be enough. I'm going to type 30 GB. Press continue and choose beginning to place the partition at the beginning of the free space that we selected earlier. If you're installing Debian in the legacy BIOS mode, you'll see one more window. You should select primary for the root partition and logical for any other partition. We're setting up the root partition, so I'm going to select primary. In the next window you need to set up the necessary parameters for the new partition. The first line name isn't mandatory. You can leave it blank. The second parameter determines the type of the file system to which the new partition will be formatted. ext4 is a modern file system that is used on most Linux computers. We should keep that. With the next line you can choose the mount point for the partition. We should keep the slash symbol because it indicates the root partition exactly what we want. If you're installing Debian in the legacy BIOS mode, you also need to make this partition bootable. To do that, select this line and press continue. It will change to on. I'm in the UEFI mode, so I'm going to keep it off. You can leave the rest of the parameters untouched. We should select done setting up the partition and press continue. Now we can see that the newly created root partition is shown in the list. The next partition is not absolutely mandatory. It's the swap space which you need to extend your RAM. When a system runs out of RAM it uses swap space to store information. You can skip its creation, but in that case after you finish Debian installation you will have to manually create a swap file. I recommend to create a swap partition instead. Select the free space at the end of the disk and press continue. Choose create a new partition. Then you need to think about the size of your swap partition. It mainly depends on your RAM size. If you have 8 GB of memory or more, it's usually a good idea to make the swap partition as large as your memory. The less RAM you have, the bigger the swap partition should be. Because many modern applications use a lot of memory, and we don't want to encounter the situation where we run out of both RAM and swap space. I would recommend to set the size of the swap space so that the sum of your RAM and swap would be at least 16 GB. For example, if you have 4 GB of RAM, allocate 12 GB for the swap partition. Then set it up at the beginning. In the next window, select Use As, press Continue and choose Swap Area. We should select Done setting up the partition and press Continue. Now we have three partitions set and a lot of free space left. 494 gigabytes. I suggest we create a home partition to store user files separately. That way in the future you can reinstall the operating system without needing to temporarily move your files into another drive. Also it will 
help to make the system stable because you will not accidentally overfill the system partition with your collection of movies. Most of the steps are similar to the root partition. I'm going to make this home partition the last one on the disk, so I want to allocate all the space that is left on this hard drive. You can do that by typing max. We should leave the X4 file system. The mount point that we need is home. Debian automatically chose it. As with the root partition, you can keep the rest of the default parameters. Don't forget to select done setting up the partition and press continue. The new home partition is here and the line has the mount point at the end. Here we go, we just partitioned our hard drive. In the future, if you'll want to reinstall Debian or install a new major version of it on this hard drive, you don't have to erase the home partition. That way you can keep your personal files and even some application settings that you stored in the home directory. To accomplish that task during the next installation, choose manual partitioning to get this window. Note that we don't have the letter F and mount points shown anymore. Make sure the ESP has the letter B to make it bootable. Letter K stands for keep formatting. For EFI partition we can keep it, but we need to format the next partition, which is our root partition, if you remember. But the installation script doesn't know it. The slash character that indicates the root partition is not there. Let's return those things back so they would look the same way I showed you earlier, but without deleting the partition. Select it and press continue. Then select the line do not use. Continue and choose X4. We need to make sure that the partition will be formatted. Select No, keep existing data, then continue. The next step is to set the mount point. Select the line and choose the root file system. If you're running Debian installation in the legacy BIOS mode, don't forget to make the partition bootable. I'm on UEFI, so I will keep it off. Press Done setting up the partition and continue. Now we have the slash character and letter F in the partition table. The swap space was automatically recognized by the installation program. It already has the letter and the mount points, so nothing to do here. The partition number 4 is our home partition. Let's set it up the way we did before except do not format it. Make sure the line says keep existing data. That way all the files that you have in it will be preserved. And finally we need to choose home from the list. Ok, we're done with the partitioning. I have one important remark about keeping user files in the home partition when reinstalling Debian. If you're going to install a new major Debian version or you decided to reinstall the old version because of some problems with the system when something doesn't work properly, I recommend to manually delete all the system setting files that you have in the home directory right before you launch the new Debian installation. Let me show you how to do that. The files that I'm talking about are located in the user home directory. You should manually delete all the files and directories with the names that start with the dot. If you don't see them, you can activate the option show hidden files in your file manager. Usually user settings are stored in those dot files. Open the terminal. Make sure that you are in the home directory, tilde sign indicates that, then run this command. You'll need to type in your password. Deleting those configuration files right before the installation can help you do clean installation and resolve some bugs. Note that after you delete the files your system can become unstable, so do that only after you prepared the installation media and are ready to reboot for Debian installation. That's it for this tutorial. See you later!